I want to share with you a practice we call breathing through. This is a practice for cultivating compassion. For the healing of our world, we need to stay open. We need to be able to be present to our world and other beings and all that it's going through. This is a great necessity, a great secret, and a great freedom for us. So this practice uses the breath. And we practice it in workshops where we can use it as we go through the practices for honoring our pain for the world. It's also wonderfully useful in our own lives, in our daily lives. So it's a meditation that we do in the midst of our activities. It uses the breath, which is wonderful because the breath is always with us. We can always turn to that friend which connects our body with our mind, inside with outside. And so we begin now. Let's just practice being with our breath, putting our attention on the breath, attending to the sensations that accompany the breath, perhaps on our upper lip and our nostrils, the filling of our lungs, the rising and falling of the abdomen. And as we attend in alert yet relaxed fashion to the breathing, not trying to breathe any special way, long or deep or slow, just being with it. And then we notice that we're not deciding each time to breathe in or out. It's happening without our volition. It's like we're being breathed, being breathed by life. Just as the person on either side of you is being breathed by life, just like everyone in this place, this town, this continent, this planet is at this moment being breathed by life the humans and the more than human beings as they fly through the air and swim through the seas of this beautiful planet, all being breathed by life. And so it can, you can begin to sense that your breath is part of a vast living web of all beings breathing of all beings being breathed by life. And now this practice invites us to be with what arises in our minds and to blend that with the rhythm of our breathing and particularly with what is hard to take in right now. Oh, there are news of natural disasters and warfare of hunger and depletion. So we can let those images rise in us and instead of closing down and turning away, we can relax and open. And as these images, we allow them to arise in our mind, Images that have come from what you've shared already in this workshop. You can take them on your breath. Like dark granules on your breath. And instead of closing them out, you breathe them right through you. That's right. To breathe them on the stream of air. Imagine a ribbon of air coming up and that stream going through your windpipe, your lungs. And now, by an act of the imagination, by the power of your imagination, you take that stream through your heart and out an opening in your heart back into the healing resources of the web of life. In this fashion... We breathe through these images 
of suffering, pain, images of people in barracks and schoolrooms and refugee camps, people waiting in lines of hands gripping bars, lost in the prison complex. Oh, we can take all of that through on the ribbon of air, but don't hang on to it. Ah, this practice is for enhancing our capacity for compassion, but not by sandbagging and holding on to the grief of the world. You let it flow through you. You can do that. So let's practice that now. Whatever images of sorrow, hunger, insufficiency, violence, they can just let those images go through the heart. They need to do that. Our hearts need to be open to the pain of our world. And then let them flow right on out, right on out, into the healing webs of life. Now perhaps (laughs) there are no images there for you to breathe in. Perhaps there's just blankness and numbness. Breathe that through too. Breathe that numbness through your heart. Because that's a very real part of our world. Or perhaps what surfaces for you is your own suffering of your own life, your own failures, your own torment, your own inadequacies. And you breathe that through, through your body, through the heart and on out. Because that is an inseparable part of our world in this time. And perhaps you might begin to feel or imagine a sense of discomfort in the chest cavity as if your heart would break. While you remember then that your heart is not an object that can break, but that if it were, they say the heart that breaks open can hold the whole universe. It is that big. So we practice. And we take some time learning this and getting used to it in the workshops. And we remember to do it when we are doing certain practices, particularly like the truth mandala for the open sentences, for the despair work. And beyond the workshop. Beyond the workshop, we find that in our daily lives, as I said, this kind of practice of dropping our defenses, not closing the doors and banging shut the windows, but opening to let the world flow through us, is a wonderfully freeing part of our day's activity. It could be when you're reading the paper, when you're watching the news, when you're seeing what is to be seen on our streets, whether it's the homeless or the trash or the lost families. You see that and you just breathe it through. It's not in lieu of action, but it's preparatory to action so that you can Let your response to the needs of the world flow, not compulsively out of some need to be self-important or hyper-busy, but out of a natural response to shared grief. Sometimes I'd find that this practice opens me also to breathe through the beauty I see, the power I see in another being, their competence, their goodness, I can breathe that through too as is knowing that it can enrich my life. Because the very act now, you can begin to sense it. Harnessing our awareness to know 
through the breath how constantly we are connected how intricately we belong with each other to this living, breathing web of life. 